Hi, I'm Allison Hadar. Welcome to The Cook's Plate. My name is Phil McGrath, and I'm the chef owner at the uh, Iron Horse Grill in Pleasantville. Uh, today, we're going to make three different dishes using probably the most basic ingredient of the kitchen. Everybody has eggs in the refrigerator. Eggs are something that uh, people, not that they abuse them, they don't know enough about them. An eggshell is actually porous. It breathes. So the longer you have your eggs, the longer they breathe. What happens with them is they do start to deteriorate after a while. These eggs are, are actually from a friend of mine's farm up in Vermont, Crooked Fence Farm. The three dishes we're gonna make today are based upon eggs. The first is a frittata. Uh, most frittatas would use uh, potatoes. We're gonna use some beautiful celery roots instead, uh, some beautiful red bell peppers, a little bit of onion. We've got two different cheeses here, grated Parmesan, grated Asiago, and of course something that you know, every restaurant menu has now, a little uh, pancetta or pork belly. Uh, the second dish we're gonna make today is what the French would call a salad tiède. We're gonna use some oyster mushrooms, asparagus, obviously an egg, some shallots and chives. Saute the asparagus and drape that over the egg. The third dish we're gonna make today is the simplest dish, but maybe the most effective dish, pastrami smoked salmon and eggs. Pastrami smoked salmon is smoked salmon that's cured with some cracked black pepper, coriander seeds, kosher salt, and brown sugar. Let's get cooking. Welcome back, uh, and let's get cooking. First dish again we're gonna do is the frittata, or the tortilla, if you will. First thing we have to do is peel the celery root. These are kind of gnarly, so what you have to do is you have to kind of take off this root end, and then we'll cut off the stem end. You'll see that, we wanna just get any of that little skin out of there. And then, just like you would uh, peel a grapefruit, go around the contour of the vegetable. Again, sawing all the time. A knife will not cut if you just press. So for, for two people, you might take about a third of this celery root. So you lay it flat. And m the most important thing about cooking, or one of the most important things about cooking, is that you want things the same size. So we're cutting these strips maybe about a quarter of an inch. That's our celery root. The next thing we're going to use is the pepper. Again, this is a sweet red pepper. What you want to do with a sweet red pepper is make sure that you take out the veins. Cut into strips. The pancetta. What pancetta really is, when you unwind it, is bacon. What they do with the pancetta is they season the inside, season the outside, salted and peppered. They roll it back up and hang it to cure. Pancetta can actually be eaten raw if you like, but I like to cook it. I like to render a little bit of the fat out and caramelize it a bit. And the natural sugar in these vegetables and in the meat as we brown them in the pan, will improve the flavor. And the onion, we'll take, again, laying it flat, holding your fingers so you won't get cut. To dice an onion, after you peel it, you make one cross cut, you cut through the strips again, and we'll dice up our onion. 
that are pan hot. We're going to use a little blend of oil in the bottom. This is a blend of canola and olive oil. I'm going to put all of the ingredients in the pan. You hear the sizzle? We want the sizzle. The reason why we want the sizzle is because we want it to start to caramelize. We're going to add a little bit of pepper, but no salt at this point. The reason why we do not add salt is because we are not supposed to salt eggs. Again, I worked at a restaurant in France. The first time I went to make some eggs to make a quiche, I beat my eggs up, put some kosher salt in, and the chef screamed at me. Uh, the reason is, with an egg, the egg white, when it's salted, becomes tough. I didn't believe it until I tried one egg with salt and one egg without salt. You can salt eggs after they're cooked, it's fine, but never salt an egg before you cook it. I'm gonna take, to this size pan, four eggs. Add a little touch of milk or half and half. With this dish, it really doesn't matter if we're gonna use low fat milk. I think we got enough fat in the dish. And with a lightly, we don't have to really get these scram completely like almost like you're making a souffle. You want to leave a little bit of texture in the egg. So I'm going to beat them about two thirds of the way. Again, I'm going to put a little cracked pepper inside. No salt. Again, beat it a little bit lightly. I'm going to come over here again. A little toss. If you lose a pepper, don't worry. You're going to see already, you're getting a little caramelization on the onions, a little caramelization, that nice burnished look and burnished flavor. We're going to keep our, our flame high, and we're going to get that, that uh, pancetta a little bit brown, get the onions a little bit brown, okay? We're going to let them settle in there. Uh, before we go much further, we're going to add our secret ingredient. A little knob of butter. You bury it right in the middle there. Again, this is going to give us flavor. Cooking is with your hands. Don't be afraid to touch things. Now, we've got that, see that nice caramelization has, has happened? We've got nice little brown spots around, okay? The butter is melting in there, really nice. And this will then go into the oven about 350, about 20 minutes or so until the egg is completely set. You'll hear a sizzle. Okay? And we're gonna tilt this around a bit, shake it a little bit. That way we make sure that the eggs coat all of the ingredients. The eggs are like, are like the glue of this frittata. They're gonna hold everything together at the end. We're gonna take our two cheeses, the Asiago, we put that on. That will give it a nice crispy crust. You can actually take Asiago cheese and bake it will actually form a kind of a firm crust on top once we put this in the oven. So after we add the Asiago, we're gonna add a little bit of Parmesan. The Parmesan will give a little nutty flavor. So again, we just wanna lightly coat it just so we get every little nook and cranny there. You'll see the eggs are bubbling right around the side. That's the signal that we should take this and pop it in the oven. We're gonna put it in a 350 to 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Welcome back, uh, we're ready to get cooking again. We did the most difficult dish first. The next dish is kind of in the middle, not quite as, most, as difficult as the first one, but not as easy as the last one. Again, we're gonna use our oyster mushrooms, and we're gonna make a warm salad. I have two pans. I have one pan for the eggs, one pan for the mushrooms. What we'll do is take a few mushrooms. Again, these are beautiful, but they're too large. They're not bite-sized. So we talked before about cutting things. I'm just gonna cut them maybe in half, you could also tear them if you like. And after they're cooked, then they're bite-sized pieces. Also, as you're doing this, you're looking to see if there's any of the, of the tough stem. If there is tough stem, you want to trim that off. Again, break the mushrooms up a little bit. You take your warm asparagus. These are just steamed. And we'll arrange those on the platter. When people make platters of food, they tend to overstuff them. You want, just to, like if you're an artist or, or a painter or a photographer, you want a little bit of open space on your palette, or rather on your canvas. 
We're gonna heat some of the same blend of oil that we had before. Add the mushrooms. And we want these mushrooms, again, to caramelize a little bit. You want that natural sugar to start to come out. You can do this dish for entertaining in up to this stage. We can get the asparagus on the plate. We can get the, uh, the mushrooms cooked. We're gonna add some parsley and some chives. We're also gonna add, to make a little warm vinaigrette in the pan, a little red wine vinegar. Again, a little pepper. Now, because we are not adding these mushrooms into the eggs, we're cooking the eggs separate, we can put a little bit of coarse salt in there as well. You hear it. You hear the sizzle. That's what you want to hear when you're cooking. Cooking is a lot to do with your ears as well as your eyes, your nose, and your hands. You have to be able to listen to food. In a restaurant kitchen, we're just not making one dish. We're making 10 dishes, 20 dishes at a time. In a professional kitchen, you want to be doing five or 10 things at the same time. You throw the mushrooms in one pan, you're gonna pull the piece of meat out of the other pan, throw something in the oven. If you don't learn to listen to your food cooking, you're gonna have a lot of problems. It's a, it's a knack that you want to get used to doing. That way you can multitask. You can get some mushrooms going, you can get something in the oven, you can be on the grill all at the same time. When they start to brown, we're gonna add a little bit of shallots. Shallots are the secret of the, of the French kitchen. Before I worked in the French kitchen, I never really used shallots. But shallots have a natural, again, sweetness. They're not as bitter as an onion. The onions you put into a stock or you really caramelize them. The shallots are more of a refined finishing process that you use in the dish. Every kitchen uses shallots, whether it's a Chinese kitchen, a French kitchen, American kitchen, whatever it is, everybody uses shallots. We add the shallots in after the mushrooms start to caramelize because the shallots, actually, the shallots actually contain more natural sugars than the mushrooms do. If you add the shallots in too early, they will start to burn before the mushrooms start to brown. Once the shallots start to caramelize, a little chives, add a touch more oil to form our vinaigrette. And then we're going to deglaze the pan. Deglazing the pan means when you put a liquid, whether it be a vinegar, whether it be a fortified wine, a white wine, a little bit of beer, or even a little bit of water or stock, what, what the, what the, uh, when, you, when you deglaze the pan, it releases all of that nice natural caramelized flavor into the sauce. You might even get a little flambe like that at home. Don't be afraid. My wife always makes me turn on the exhaust fan at home. She hates the smell of food throughout the house. I love the smell of food throughout the house. So now what we've got, if you look at the pan, what we've got, you may have a touch more oil if you want to, is a warm vinaigrette. Remember we call this a warm salad or a salad tiède. The word tiède in French means warm. We're going to spoon the nice warm mushrooms over the asparagus getting everything in there. All that nice look, the beautiful warm vinaigrette that we've just made. In the meantime, for this dish we'll put two eggs on top. And again, the freshness of the egg is evident because it's got a nice tight yolk, a nice tight white. Our secret ingredient one more time, a little dash of butter. Once our butter starts to foam, before it browns, we gently drop the eggs in. Now one trick that we're gonna do, we're gonna lower our flame and cover the eggs. What this will do is force the whites to kind of coat the egg, and that's called the basted egg. If you have a salamander or a broiler at home, you can do the same thing, break the eggs in. Once they start to cook, you can put them under the salamander. That top heat is what makes the, 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 the white kind of jump on top of the yolks and will have a nice light color, li nice light kind of a, a film over the top of the yolks. A lot easier than doing a over easy egg and a lot nicer looking, I think, as well. Over easy eggs, all you see is the bottom. This way, you're gonna see the actual yolk and see the top of the egg. You take a peek, you hear it cooking. You hear those eggs sizzling in the pan. We've lowered the heat so that the, the whites will, again, jump up on top of the yolks, kind of coat the yolks, and they, what will happen then is the whites will become completely cooked because you don't want to eat a raw white or a half-cooked white, but the yolks will remain 
tender on the inside, a little bit runny, and we pour them back over the asparagus, and you sit down and you break that yolk, it kind of helps to form a, a, another dimension to the sauce, almost like you're making your own little mayonnaise, because mayonnaise is made with egg yolks, vinegar, and oil. So this way, you're almost making your own little kind of mayonnaise-y thing on your plate. Let's take a look. See how the, how the white has kind of coated the yolks? Okay? And again, don't be afraid of the butter. The butter's good for you. So put those right in the center. A little, a little touch of chopped chives on top. I wish you could smell this. This smells great. You got butter, you've got oil, you've got eggs, you got mushrooms, you got herbs, you got wine vinegar. What else could you want? We're gonna take a little break now, gonna come back and do actually what probably is the sexiest dish and the simplest dish we're gonna do today. Welcome back and let's get cooking. We're gonna do our simplest dish by far, but sometimes what I think is the sexiest dish we're gonna do out of all three today. First, we're gonna take some salmon. Again, we showed you before, beautiful, succulent, silky smoked salmon, a beautiful, fresh egg, a little bit of butter. What else could you want? Again, secret ingredient, a little touch of butter. This dish is actually a takeoff on a dish called uh, sheared eggs, country style eggs. Country style eggs is where you would take slices of ham, put them in the bottom of a little cocotte, break an egg over the top, pop it in the oven, come back five or 10 minutes later, the egg is just nicely cooked, the ham has got a little bit of uh, caramelization from the bottom of the pan, take a, a piece of uh, cornbread or a nice biscuit, dip it in, and you've got breakfast. We're gonna just take the butter, again, just melt it enough to where it starts to foam. In kitchens, we usually use, leave our butter out, although don't tell the Board of Health, you leave the butter out to be room temperature, otherwise you're gonna wait too long for your butter. A little foam, you see that little foam start to happen? You pour that into your ramekin, your cocotte, whatever you'd like. Take a nice slice of salmon on one side. Put two beautiful pieces of salmon. Layer them in on top of the butter. I'm gonna take, Bob's egg supply is dwindling here. I'm gonna break our egg on top. It's the easiest thing you can do. You just simply take this dish and pop it in the oven. 10 or 12 minutes in a 350 to 375 degree oven, you'll have a beautifully sheared egg on top of the wonderful, silky, smoked pastrami salmon. Um, what we'll do now is, it's been about 20, 25 minutes, let's take a look and see how our uh, frittata is doing. Oh, wow. Take a look at that. Got a beautiful little brownness to the outside. It's nice and, again, you can touch it. It's firm. We have to make sure we can loosen that. If you're, if you're afraid, don't be afraid. Shake the pan. Take one of these offset spatulas, run underneath, and we're ready. Let me, take, let me get a, a platter. And if you're doing a buffet, this is, a, again, a wonderful dish to do. It's a do-ahead dish. If you really feel like you want to pop it back in the microwave or pop it back in the oven to warm it up, that's fine too. Put a little touch of chopped chives on top of it if you like to. Sprinkle them around the plate. A nice little look. You could use a little tomato salsa if you like, whether you use a nice store-bought one or one you want to make yourself. And simply, you're going to cut this into wedges. Now, it's been about, uh, about eight minutes or so. The sheared egg should take about eight minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, perfect. There we go. You see the way that that salmon has gotten a nice little crust on the outside? You're gonna have the beautiful egg yolk that's gonna break all over that. A nice little piece of baguette or to dip in. And again, that's the easiest of the dishes that we've made. The simplest of the dishes that we've made. But sometimes the simplicity is, is, makes it the sexiest dish of everything we've done. If you want to take a look, we're going to recap. The dish that took the longest, the dish that was the, uh, you know, had the most mise en place, maybe the most stuff going on is the frittata. Uh, but don't be afraid of that. Again, you can use potatoes instead of the celery root. Uh, the second dish, a little more complex, but not too bad. 
steamed asparagus, the salatiade, again a warm salad, warm oyster mushrooms, a little red wine vinegar, olive oil, chives, shallot. The third one, pastrami smoked salmon and eggs. Fast, elegant, uh, you have a bunch of people over for breakfast or a bunch of people coming over. If you've got a couple of ramekins like this, you make one individual one each, pop it in the oven, you can make it in a little souffle mold if you'd like to. Well, I hope you enjoyed our, our, uh, our little egg lesson today. Again, buy the freshest eggs. Simple ingredients, made well, are something that anybody can do at home. Uh, if you'd like to maybe sample some of these dishes or something else that we do, come up and see us at the Iron Horse Grill in Pleasantville. We'd love to have you. Just give us a call. Let us know that you saw us on the show. And again, you know, keep it simple and keep on cooking. Thanks again.